ています。Hello and welcome to this video. This is um, a video on a Nimzu Indian line, and this is the line with 4E3, commonly known as the Rubinstein variation. Let's get to the starting position, and this is the move E3. This is um, one of the absolute main lines. E3 on move 4, the line covered here, and the classical Queen C2 basically share this. Um, status of being the absolute main line. Um, the move E3 uh, at first doesn't look all that um, dangerous or aggressive because White is locking in his bishop. But um, if you look at this a little bit more closely at the choice on move 4, you will see that it is not that easy to actually develop this bishop. As we have seen, for example, in the early bishop g5 line, the Leningrad variation, this is often even a bit premature as the bishop is not helping white on the queen side, where it sometimes needs to defend um, a pawn, for example. Um, you can play knight f3, of course, but that is the Rogozin, like here, knight f3. We transpose. The move e3 has mostly two ideas. It wants to speed up the king side development. We have to absolutely see that white uh, is doing lots of things, but not working towards castling. So this is a move that helps to get castled. Bishop d3 is a natural follow-up, develop the knight, castle. So it's uh, rather logical in that regard. The second point of the move, and this is uh, really commonly seen, is to play the knight to e2 to help its friend on c3 and being able to recapture without um, allowing double pawns. This approach is often recommended in repertoire books. There are a couple of books who recommend this line, for example, by um, uh, Kornev, uh, Grandmaster, I think, um, who released a two volume, I think it's two or three volumes on 1d4. It's recommended by, by Shandorf in a book or and uh, by John Watson. There are a couple of uh, books who recommend this. Not because it's so great, actually, but it is easier to learn than the other lines. Now, uh, what is our choice against e3? Um, black, as usual in the Nimzo, is very flexible about this. You can play um, yeah, basically every pawn move that makes sense, and you can castle. Um, with our repertoire approach of usually playing d5, the moves that mostly come into consideration are castling and then playing d5 or playing d5 immediately. The move d5 immediately, however, has a drawback. After the immediate d5, white can play a3 and after we take, which is kind of um, yeah, mandatory bishop e7 is very passive, so we take. And now we get into a situation that you should compare with the Zemish variation with a3 on move 4. What we don't want in the Zemish is that in a situation like this, white takes, and then after pawn takes, we have a pawn structure like this, where white can play bishop d3, and now importantly, the knight to e2, castle and play for f3 and e4. We don't want this scenario. This is not a completely terrible uh, way of playing for black, but it is very demanding and not popular for uh, practical reasons. White scores very heavily in these kind of lines. So this is absolutely to be avoided. It's easily avoided because we can castle first and then see what happens. This is also, of course, the most flexible move as we don't commit to any pawn formation yet. Now, if white plays a3 now, in comparison, we take, and now, of course, not d5. That is the thing that we wanted to avoid. But what we can do is we can play the move knight to c6. This is something that you can easily compare with our recommendation against the Zemish where we would have the same position or could reach the same position, but with white having played pawn to f3 instead of pawn to e3, so that right now he could play e4 in one go. This basically means that this here, I'm sorry about this painting, um, this means 
that we are basically having an improved version as White in the long run wants to play E4, yeah, to build up a big center. Um, here, White has tried some moves that we should briefly check to get a feel for what's going on. Um, the most popular by far is Bishop D3, quite logical, yeah, preparing E4 immediately. But White has also tried Knight to F3, which doesn't bother us all that much. Our play now is pretty clear. Once we have the knight here, we want a dark squared center with d6 and e5, and maybe get in idea sometimes with the knight coming here to put pressure on the pawn. So here, d6 and e5 is a very logical way to play. After castling, we have a good range of setups um, and somewhat uncommon one, but in this particular case, a very promising one is bishop g4 anticipating that that knight might move and then we can trade um, a minor piece. Something like this here looks very okay. In fact, with the bishop being on b2 or, I mean, you can argue about the move bishop b2, but um, wherever it is placed for white, it's never well placed. And we have clear ideas. Yeah, Again, knight to a5, maybe c5. We have targets and white doesn't have a clear idea what to do. The move knight f3 looks completely um, harmless to me. Knight e2 looks a little bit better. The idea would be to bring this to g3 and then push e4, but we are um, definitely in good shape here. We could play with e5 or alternatively, as we know that the knight will absolutely not help in defending this pawn, we can immediately play against that weak pawn. So this strategy, well known from the Zemisch, is pretty strong. Here after e4, we should be aware that white has the potential idea to play bishop g5. This is something that um, oftentimes should be addressed and not simply allowed. Here a good way to do it is to simply retreat the knight prophylactically. This might at first seem passive, but there are. this is not such an um, easy assessment to make. The knight also has active ideas. It can be good on d6, attack pawns, and opening up the f pawn to move can be very relevant, as we will see. Bishop d3, knight a5, queen e2, and now a good move, c5. We fix that weakness and plan to increase the pressure against the pawn. If white now pushes d5, we have a very strong uh, reply to that, and we play f5. That's very nice. It, um, it really looks like a very sharp move, and um, it's difficult to play this um, yeah, like make it up over the board. Knowing the idea helps enormously. Here, in some cases, we even have the better play immediately. For example, if white takes on e6, this is a very strong reply. Yeah, we attack the knight and white doesn't really have a good way to go. Where, where, where is the knight supposed to go? Yeah, let's say it, um, it goes uh, back to f1. Yeah, we simply recapture and White's whole <clears throat> placement of pieces is a mess. Yeah, we are currently looking at one, two, three bad minor pieces and this pawn is extremely weak. So White after f5 should definitely capture this pawn after which we take d5. That was the idea. And after this sequence, we retain a very good game. The pawn on f5 cannot be kept, for example, after castles we take it, and if anything, those pawns look weak. Um, I think we even have good alternatives along the way, and the play with um, with this bishop a6 and knight a5 is very natural and well known from the Zemisch. Um, White will, however, most of the time play bishop d3, that is most natural, and we play e5. It is um, important to see that it's this was a free preview of our anti-1d4 course based on the Nimzuinian and Rogozin available on chessable.com. Thanks for watching and see you soon.